Welcome friends to this uh, new week of lectures for soil science and technology and uh, we will start with this, uh, uh, we will start this week with the topic that is diffuse double layer theories and uh, so uh, this is very important for different soil physical and chemical properties and we will discuss why and uh, we will probably, we will we'll cover these concepts. Uh, for example, what is diffuse double layer, what are the different types of diffuse double layers and what is quantitative description of double layers and then we will talk about zeta potential, isoelectric points and all these things. So, let us start with the diffuse double layer. Now, diffuse double layer is basically you know that all the clay particles have negative charge because of uh, either uh, you know, um, isom you know most of the time this because of isomorphic substitution. So, they can adsorb cations. So, as a result of this ads adsorption of cations under dry condition, these cations are tightly bound to clay surface by electrostatic force and this electrostatic force depends on charge, position of charge and valence of ex exchangeable cations. So, these three are important factors for electrostatic force. Now, Diffuse double layer comes into question when the soil is wet. So, when so wet cations are adsorbed or cations adsorbed try to diffuse away from the surface due to their higher concentration, high concentration near surface that is called the, due to the Brownian movement. Now, you can see here uh, this is a negative colloid and this is a uh, uh, this is the in case of dry condition and this is fully hydrated condition. So, in the dry condition you can see these negative colloid is surrounded by these uh, you know positive charge uh, cations which are tightly bound. However, when there is a fully hydrated condition obviously, these tightly bound cations will try to diffuse away due to their Brownian movement and that is the th you know uh, condition when diffuse double layer comes into action. So, why? Let us see. So, the diffusive force along with electrostatic forces exerted by the negative clay surface causes the cations to be distributed around the clay surface as a cloud. As you can see in the last slide also, they are surrounding the clay uh, you know negatively charged clay color as a cloud like formation. So, this distribution of cations is similar to air in atmosphere, where the escaping tendency of air is overcome by earth's gravitational pull. So, there is a counterbalance, I mean there is a balance between these two factors. So, this charge clay surface and the distributed charge in adjacent phase together is called the diffuse double layer. You can see the charge clay surface and adjacent and distributed charge in adjacent phase together is called diffuse double layer. The first layer is made by this negatively charged clay surface, the second layer is made by these distributed charges or ions. So, this is a diffuse double layer. You can see here, uh, the, if this is a clay surface obviously, it will develop negative charge as you can see and this negative charge will be satisfied these positively charged cations. However, if you see the distribution of the cations obviously, they will be highly concentrated along the uh, surface of the clay. However, their concentration will decrease as they move away or you know go to the further distance from the clay surface. So, basically they are diffusing. So, this uh, graph also shows the relationship between the distance and concentration. So, as the distance increase both the cation concentration getting decrease and also anion concentration is increasing. Because obviously, when there will be negative charge at the clay surface, there will not be high amount of anions because of repulsion. So, there will be minimum amount of anion present at the near vicinity of the clay surface. However, as you go further away from the clay surface, their, their, their concentration will be increasing as we can see in this picture, their concentration is increasing in this zone. 
so obviously the anion concentration will increase and in the bulk solution zone after a certain distance they will be present in equilibrium condition so this is how the diffuse double layer uh, looks like this will be firstly you know a clay surface you know this is the first layer followed by a second layer of diffusing ion so the concentration of the cations decreases with distance from the surface where that's of anion increases with distance from the surface and after some distance there will be a bulk solution where the concentration of the cations and anions are equal and unaffected by the surface so after a certain distance you see there is there are almost similar so there is unaffected further from the clay surface so this is the diffuse double layer so the diffuse double layer does consist of the permanent negative charge of the clay and the cations diffused in the soil solution that balances the negative charge of the clay so that's how a diffuse double layer is basically made of so the innermost layer strongly held by the clay it is known as the stern layer we'll discuss what is stern uh, uh, you know in couple of minutes and the water in this stern layer is known as the adsorbed water and is more viscous than the free water and a layer extending from the stern layer away from the surface is called the diffuse layer we'll see what are the stern layers and diffuse layer so if we go so this is a stern you know this is a pictorial depiction of a diffuse double layer so let us see this is the highly negative clay colloid here and it is first surrounded this negative charge is first satisfied by the pota you know by the cations at the nearest vicinity creating the stern layer here the stern layer is basically here this uh, black zone which is surrounding this uh, uh, highly negative colloid and as a result if you see as we move forward as we, as we move ahead from this uh, you know um, from the surface of the negative colloids the concentration of the cations is getting decreased and this zone is called the diffused layer and obviously after a certain distance after the certain distance you will see the ions in equilibrium in the soil solution so there will be both positive cations and negative anions so the stern layer is the layer of cations tightly adsorbed by the colloid located immediately vicinity of the colloid which is almost black in color in this picture and the diffuse layer is the layer of cations beyond stern layer diffused into the combined electrostatic force and diffusive force so if we consider this is the stern layer and this will be the diffuse layer now i hope that now i hope that it is uh, and you know you can understand now obviously uh, at the equilibrium with the you know, when the ions will be equilibrium in the solution you will see both positive counter ions and negative counter ions okay the positive counter ions are this uh, you know uh, you know relatively uh, you know these white circles whereas the black circles are negative coions okay so uh, let us move ahead ahead and see what are the different models for expressing the diffuse double layer so the first model was is the helmholtz uh, double layer model which was given by the scientist helmholtz is the first given double layer model now in this model you can see the negative charge on the colloid is considered to be evenly distributed over the surface with a charge density of sigma and the total counter charge in the second layer is concentrated in a plane parallel to the surface at distance x so if the medium has a dielectric constant d then the electrokinetic potential zeta is the same as the total potential psi and we can calculate the total potential by using the formula 
and the electrochemical potential is maximum at the colloid surface here and obviously and it drops linearly as you can see here it drops linearly at the location with increasing distance so we are when we are increasing distance it drops linearly so obviously you can see this line represent potential distribution with the distance and in case of Helmholtz double layer obviously there will be positive cation as you can see here the positive cations are congregated at the clay surface parallelly so obviously this is the uh, you know the total counter charge in the second layer is concentrated in a plane parallel to the surface and uh, you know further as we move ahead we will see that uh, uh, there uh, you know the potential is linearly decreasing so this is the helmholtz layer so let us see what is uh, the next layer what is the further modification now the further modification is goy chapman double layer model now the negative charge is again here considered distributed evenly over the colloid surface however the counter ion are dispersed into the liquid layer as are the gas molecules in the earth atmosphere and this theory is therefore called the diffuse double layer theory of goy and chapman so you can see here this is the bulk sol you know this is the salt solution and this is the distance x from the clay surface the potential distribution you can see there is a i mean there is a de exponential decay in the potential as we go from the uh, clay surface so uh, the concentration distribution in the liquid zone follows the boltzmann equation and the boltzmann equation can be denoted by these equation so Cx is basically concentration of the cations in mole, in mole per liter at distance x from the surface and Cx0 is basically concentration of the cations in the bulk solution in mole per liter and Z is valence and E is the electro, uh, electronic charge, the psi is the electrical potential, K is the Boltzmann constant and Ti is the absolute temperature. So, uh, you know uh, we have seen what is this Goy Chapman double layer model now <coughs> because of the attraction by the negatively charged surface cations in the solution phase tend to distribute themselves over the colloid surface so that electroneutrality is maintained obviously when there will be negative charge it will be try you know this you know the cations will try to distribute themselves over the surface to maintain the electroneutrality and and the tendency for these ions to diffuse away is counteracted by the van der Waal attraction. Obviously, when they, there will be congregation of cations, obviously there will be charge of you know mutual repulsion, and the mutual repulsion will also be counterbalanced by the van der Waal attraction force. A deficit of anions is usually present in the liquid interface, and the total charge of the surface is considered to be the balance by excess cations we know all these things so the initial electrical potential at the colloid surface is maximum and decreases exponentially with the distance from the surface as follows so we know all these things so uh, you know let us go ahead and see what are the assumption of goy chapman double layers there are four major assumption of goy chapman double layer the surface first of all the surface is flat and infinite and uniformly charged Second, the ions are assumed to be point charge distributed according to the Boltzmann distribution. Thirdly, the solvent is represented solely by dielectric constant and the electrolyte is assumed to be symmetrical. Now, all these both Helmholtz and Guy Chapman, they try to describe these adsorption, you know, they, they try to describe these diffuse double layer or double layer the distribution of the uh, counter ions in the you know in the in the soil and liquid interface however both of them has some uh, you know uh, have some limitation so stern gave another model which we call stern double layer model now stern double layer model basically it combines both helmholtz and goy chapman double layer concepts so how so, guy, you know, uh, according to Stern, you see that potential follows a linear distribution in Stern layer. So, this is called the Stern layer. In the Stern layer, obviously, there will be, uh, you know, uh, the counter ions or cations will be tightly adsorbed over the clay surface. However, away from that Stern layer, there will be a diffuse layer where the further cations will diffuse away. 
with the increase in the distance. So, this is how we call a stunt double layer model. So, you can see uh, there will be both linear and exponential decay of the potential from the clay surface. So, if you remember in case of Helmholtz, they said there is a linear decrease of potential as we increase the distance from the clay surface and in case of Goya Chapman, there was a you know exponential decay of potential from the clay surface and these basically a synthesis of both of these. So, you can see a combination of both linear as well as a you know exponential decrease of um, the exponential decrease of uh, potential. So, this is how it is called uh, Stern double layer model. So, comparing how we now let us compare these three models. Helmholtz model obviously counter ions are held by a fixed layer between clay surface and soil solution and Goy Chapman model a diffuse double layer due to the thermal energy of cations causing a concentration gradient which leads to a condition of maximum entropy of diffuse double layer. You know entropy means the degree of randomness. So, maximum entropy means maximum randomness and as a result they will diffuse away. Stern model basically it combines the above two model and double layer comprises of a rigid next rigid region next to the mineral surface and a diffuse layer joining the bulk solution. So, this is how the Stern model combines both this model. So, again this also shows a very good representation. So, this is Stern model you I have, I have already discussed there is a linear and exponential decay of potential. So, the first one is basically Helmholtz, the second one is Goy's layer. So, this is basically a synthesis of these two model. So, another here you can see in the uh, Helmholtz uh, the counter ions are you know are uh, you know adsorbed parallel in the parallel plane just uh, in the vicinity of the clay surface. However, in the Goy you can see uh, you know uh, the most of the cations are concentrated. However, there is a you know exponential decay of concentration of the cations as we increase the distance and in case of stern there are uh, two types of uh, layers. One is the fixed potassium layer here uh, and there is a further diff you know uh, not potassium layer and the cation layer adjacent to the uh, clay surface and these cations will further diffuse away as we increase in the distance. So, distance from the particle surface in the x axis. So, this is basically how we can visually you know if we visually compare these three double layer models we can see these differences all right so now this is very important concept you see there are you know the thickness of the double layer it is it is variable how do you know what is the thickness of the double layer and how it varies now thickness of the double layer is dependent on several factors First of all, with the increase in the distance, ions diffuse away because when there will be increase in the distance from the clay surface, obviously they will try to diffuse away because there will attractive force will decrease and as a result they will further diffuse away to the bulk solution. And more the cationic concentration, if we add more cationic concentration, it will reduce the concentration gradient in the liquid interface. And as a result of the reduce the reduction of the concentration gradient in the liquid interface, you know it will make the uh, double layer thickness reduce. So, it will reduce the double layer thickness obviously, because how? Because when you increase the cation concentration, it will try to uh, congregate all the cations at the clay surface and as a result of their congregation at the clay surface obviously, uh, you know uh, the tendency of cations to diffuse away will reduce and ultimately it will reduce the concentration gradient in the liquid interface and ultimately it will uh, make the uh, so, you know the thickness of the layers is smaller and at equivalent electrolyte concentration monovalent cations in exchange positions yield thicker diffuse double layer than divalent cation. So, if the uh, cation is sodium, it will produce a uh, thicker uh, you know diffuse double layer than that of a divalent cations like calcium, than that of a trivalent cations like aluminum. So, obviously, it depends on the valency of the cations. Obviously, when there will be sodium present, the, the thickness of the diffuse double layer will be highest followed by calcium 
and then so on so forth. So, obviously, based on the electrolyte concentration, when you increase the electrolyte concentration and when you increase the valency of the cations which are present in the electrolyte, obviously, the thickness of the diffuse double layer will decrease. So, uh, what is the implication of this thickness of the diffuse double layer? This is very important that is why we are learning these diffuse double layer and its theories. Now, you know that Claes ne carries the negative charge and which are ordinarily balanced by exchangeable cations adsorbed on the surface and in suspension the cations tends to diffuse away from the clay surface into the bulk solution to balance the counter you know the concentration difference occurring between the interface and the bulk liquid phase it is the natural phenomena. However, a large portion of these cations especially those in the immediate vicinity of the clay surface cannot move very far away because of the strong attraction from the negative charge on the clay surface and the cations aggregate into the interface thereby forming electrical double layer we have known all these things so far which can vary, which can vary in thickness from 50 to 300 angstrom. So, you can see it is a large range. Now, whenever such clay particles approach together, for example, let us see this is a clay particle with high congregation of cations. This is another clay particles with congregation of cations. So, when these two clay particle clay 1 or for example, clay 2, they will uh, you know they will they will move you know they will approach to each other. Obviously, there will be a repulsion between these positive charges. So, as a result of this repulsion, occurs between the outer parts of the double layer have the same type of charge. So, the suspension is this considered stable because as a result of repulsion they will not come close together, they will not form a aggregate, as a result they will be dispersed into the soil, into the soil solution, as a result of their dispersion into the soil solution they is this will be you know they it is then it will be called a stable suspension and the suspension is this stable and the clay is considered to be dispersed again due to the present you know due to the presence of positive charge cations in the clay particles when the clay particles will come come close together there will be repulsion as a result of repulsion they will not form the uh, go, you know they will not form aggregates as a result of non formation of aggregates they will remain to the solution in dispersed condition as a result the suspension is considered stable and uh, you know there will be no flocculation now because of this approach because of this approach the diffuse counter and atmosphere of the two particles interfere with each other and the amount of work to bring about the changes is called repulsive energy or repulsive potential which is denoted by vr vr at the given distance now the range and effectiveness of the repulsive potential depends on the thickness of the diffuse double layer and the repulsive force decreases obviously Yep, you know usually exponentially with increasing distance between the particles because when the particles will be farther away the repulsion will be decreased. So, you can see here the repulsive force which is denoted by Vr is decreasing continuously with the increase of the distance interparticle distance. So, this is clear. So, let us see what are the other implications. Opposite to the repulsive force, the clay suspension is also subjected to interparticle attraction. So, there are two, uh, two forces, one is repulsive forces, another is attractive forces and these forces of attraction are usually called the van der Waals attraction or VA, this is the van der Waals attraction force. Now, the van der Waals attraction is only effective at very close distance and it decays rapidly with distance as you can see it decays rapidly with distance and when the interparticle distance decreases to 20 angstrom or less van der Waal force will become dominant and the clay particle will flocculate. Now, as a result of this van der Waal attraction when the interparticle distance is less than 20 angstrom obviously, these two particle will further club together and it will 
it will flocculate and the, at the interparticle distance of greater than 20 angstrom repulsive forces are dominant creating a stable clay suspension. So, again it all depends upon the interparticle distance. When the interparticle distance is greater than 20 angstrom the repulsive forces will be dominant as a result of the repulsive forces there will be repulsion between the two particle because of the similar uh, positive cations uh, uh, in their outer surface and as a result the, the condition will be stable that means the, they will be, the soil will be dispersed there will be no flocculation. However, when the interparticle distance comes you know goes down below uh, 5 angstrom there will be van der Waal attraction as a result of the van der Waal attraction the resultant you know as a result of the van der Waal attraction these particle will you know uh, will clap together and create the flocculation. So, repulsion will dominate at low electrolyte concentration obviously, because at low electrolyte concentration the thickness of the diffuse double layer is greater. The clay particles are shielded by relatively thick double layers in case of low electrolyte concentration decreasing the possibility of mutual approach. So, if there is no mutual approach obviously, there will be uh, you know there will be you know no attraction. So, uh, I mean uh, the repulsion will dominate low electrolyte concentration because the decreasing the possibility of mutual approach, mutual approach will be very less. For mutual approach you need a distance interparticle distance less than 5 angstrom as we have already known. Uh, so, I am sorry 20 angstrom, 20 angstrom. So, when it is less than 20 angstrom van der Waal attractive force will be dominant. However, when the repulsion will be dominant at low electrolyte concentration and the clay particles will be shielded by relatively thick double layers and decreasing the possibilities of mutual approach and at high electrolyte concentration the chances of close approach are made possible by compression of the double layers. We know that when you increase the more electrolyte, electrolyte concentration the thickness of the double diffuse double layer will decrease and as a result will be there will be further compression and you know in this condition van der Waal attractive force may overcome the repulsive force and coagulation or flocculation particles occurs rapidly. So, resultant force will be more and as a result there will be flocculation or coagulation. So, which one is better? Now, the question is which one is better? Well, for well aggregation obviously, it is better to have a well aggregated I mean for better plant growth and better soil physical and chemical properties you need to have a better aggregated soil. So, you must encourage soil flocculation and coagulation for better aggregation. If the soil is dispersed this is not good for soil physical as well as biological activities and, and chemical activities. We will discuss that later on. Now, another important aspect let us uh, see. Uh, uh, so, uh, in a nutshell you will see that when the interparticle distance are higher obviously, repulsive forces will be dominant where more than 20 angstrom and when the you know uh, uh, when the interparticle distance is less than 20 angstrom attractive forces or into you know van der Waal forces will be dominant and all this depends on the thickness of the double layer and thickness of the double layer you know can be changed by increasing the concentration of the electrolytes and uh, uh, you know and also you know the changing the valency of the cations which are present in the electrolytes. So, let us stop here and in the next lecture we will be covering zeta potential and then we will go to our next topic that is uh, uh, adsorption isotherms. Thank you very much.